All right, let's create a couple of tables on the fly. So let me show you an example real quick. So I have this products table. I want to have a table that gives me the full price. Uh, that means price uh, plus taxes. I could say something like this. Uh, I'm going to select this and there you go. I could have the full price here, but let's pretend I want to have this table somewhere so I can join that with something else in the future. Maybe I have a big store procedure. I'm going to have um, multiple tables. So these are called temporary tables. So instead of doing this, I'm just going to comment this out, go back to the original table. I'm going to create a table called full price. So notice that the syntax here includes the pound. And I still have to mention the columns. Notice this is the only difference here. So I want to add this column, which is now here in the regular table. And that's it. So let's create this table. And let's make sure it was created and we have the required columns. So you notice that. So this is not actually a discount, but a full price. So you can also drop these temporary tables. So I'm going to drop this one because I realize that I have this uh, error here. So let me just drop that one and let's create it again. So let me just comment this out. Now that I corrected this, I'll create it again. Then I can just select it again. And I'm going to have this full price column now. OK. Now I want to add something to that table. So let's populate the table with some data coming from my original table, right? So that's the idea. Like these temporary tables, uh, they usually get some data from, from your original tables, right? In this scenario, I'm going to insert into my full price 25% table. And then notice that I have a full price now. OK, that's it. So uh, for now, I have some data coming from the product table, but I want to add this price, sorry, this uh, full price column. So I have to say, OK, I want everything from uh, my products table, comma, and then my extra column. So which is a discount and it's going to calculate this. Again, this is not a discount. This is a full price. Okay. And that's it. So after the insert, you're going to tell a SQL what to insert. So I want in this case, something like this. Let me just execute this. You'll see that it got five rows inserted. So let me just run this again. And you'll see the new column uh, as a full price. So now this part is different than this part because I have a real table now that contains this uh, full price column. Like it's a table on the fly, but I can still use it for many um, different purposes. OK. All right. That's it. Uh, let's just try to create a new one. So I could say something like this. So I'm going to create a different table. Uh, OK. I noticed that this is a 25%. So again, I'll have to drop this. 
I could just run this bar here, execute it, and do all of this again, because that was a 25%, but again, it should work. So let me just select this, and that's it. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense, 25%. Now I'm going to have a 30%. So this is going to be my new table, 30%. Um, but I'll pretend that I need an extra column now. So I'll say this new column is called message. And it's going to be a bar car, 100. So that's my new table. That's a temporary table as well. It's going to give me a 30% now. So notice that if I run this, it's created already. Let me just select it. This is a 30%. If I select this, notice that I have this new column here. So now I got to tell SQL uh, what to insert. So I want to insert something similar. So, I want to have this as a 30%, uh, as a full price, 30%. But because we have a new column called message, I have to add it here as well, right? Because I'm selecting an extra column. And that's going to be a message. So, I'm going to concatenate something here. Let's pretend that's going to be my result. OK, and then I'm going to have this parameter here as a price. And then let's say product name. So product name. That's going to be my message. And let's do a 2025. OK, that's going to be my message. So if I happen to run this, because I already created the table, so I want to insert, so I'm missing the insert part. So I'm going to insert this, comma, message, because that's the new column I have. Then let me run this and let's see if it works. Okay, it says invalid name. Uh, let me see what's going on. Just run this. So message is here. Just got to make sure that I have everything here. So full price, comma, MS. G and uh, okay, so that was my bad. I didn't change it because I just copy paste. That was my bad. So I'm going to insert this into the right table, which is 30%. Okay, now it's uh, affected. So let me just select the 30% with the message. There you go. So now you have the full price and the message. What if I want to call those two temporary tables? So I want to have this 25% and 30%. I could do that here. So that's perfect. So these are like a very important tables when you're working with big store procedures so I could do something with this uh, we could pretend that this uh, percentage is changed every two weeks or every month or by request you know and they may ask you to modify the message as well so you could do that with these uh, temporary tables and you don't have to create new tables here. So because they change a lot. 
And again, you can put those on store procedures and call those and get pretty much this flexibility of uh, creating this on the fly. Okay, that was pretty much everything for this video.